This video is about solving a system of equations by using a technique known as substitution. So why is it called substitution? Because literally multiple times throughout this process we are going to plug something in to replace an existing variable. All right. So the steps for solving by substitution. We're going to solve one equation for a single variable. We have to know what one variable is equal to whether that's equal to a number or whether that's equal to another expression. All right, step two then, once I have that, I'm going to substitute that into the other equation. I'm going to solve the resulting equation. The one thing that you're going to see in this equation in step three is we only have a singular variable. It could be in multiple places, but there's only one variable. I'm going to substitute the result we get from solving in step three into one of the original equations and then solve for the other variable. And then as always, when we're solving a system, we're going to write the solution as an ordered pair. So let's try a couple examples here, see how we do. All right, I look and analyze to these two. And I notice both of these equations are easy to be graphed right now, but I'm not going to graph them. I'm going to look at these two equations and use this technique called substitution. I'm going to take what y is equal to in the first equation and replace y in the second equation. Now, that changes this bottom equation to now become 2x plus 6 is equal to 4x plus 6. If you notice in this equation, now I just have x's. So what am I going to do? I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to move the x's to the left, so I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. All right, that'll leave me with negative 2x plus 6 equals 6. I'm going to subtract this 6 from the side where x is. That's going to leave me with negative 2x equals 0. And then divide to solve. 0 divided by anything leaves me with zero. So I know x now. I'm going to take that value of x, go back and plug it into one of the original equations. I'm going to choose to plug it into the first one. So if I plug it into the first equation, I have y equals 2x, but I'm going to write that as 2 times 0 plus 6. Notice again, I substituted what x was equal to. That's why this is called substitution. All right, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 6 tells me y is equal to 6. I have my x value. I have my y value. I'm going to write it as an ordered pair in alphabetical order, 0, 6. And this is my solution. This is where those two lines cross over each other. Let's take a look at another one. Now, in these two equations, I notice I definitely want to use this first one to plug into the second one because the first one is only is the only equation that is solved for y or solved for any variable. All right, so let's take that and substitute. Let's see, I've got negative 4x minus, be careful here, I'm going to have to distribute that. So it's minus 4x minus 1 equals 9. All right. I now have a single variable I'm going to solve. Distribute. Negative 4x minus 4x. Distribute that negative again. Plus 1 equals 9. Combine like terms. I have negative 8x plus 1 equals 9. To solve for x, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And that leaves me with negative 8x equals 8. Divide to solve. And that leaves me with x is equal to 8 divided by negative 8, which would be negative 1. I take that and I substitute it back into one of the original equations in order to find y. I'm going to plug it into the top equation because it already says y equals all right, so I'm going to substitute, which means 4 times negative 1, replace the x with negative 1, minus 1. This leaves me with y equals negative 4 minus 1, 
or y equals negative 5. I have an x value, I have a y value, I write it as an ordered pair, negative 1, negative 5. All right, and that is the point of intersection of these two lines. Now, what if none of the equations is solved for a variable? Well, when I look at these two equations, I notice right away I can get this x by itself very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. I'm going to move the 2y over, leaving me with x equals negative 2y minus 8. I'm going to take what x is equal to and substitute it into this bottom equation. So let's see what happens now. I have 3 times negative 2y minus 8 plus 3y equals negative 18. And if you look across there, I only have y's now. All right, so I'm going to solve for y. Distribute negative 6y minus 24 plus 3y equals negative 18. Combine like terms, negative 3y minus 24 equals negative 18. All right, I'm going to add 24 to both sides. And that leaves me with negative 3y is equal to 6. Divide to solve. And I get y is equal to 6 divided by negative 3, which is negative 2. Let me make that negative a little clearer on that 3. Okay, so now we're going to take what y equals, and I'm going to plug it into any of the original equations. Realistically, I have the top one, x plus 2y equals negative 8, but I could also plug it into what x equals. If you think about it, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find x, so I'm going to plug it in to another way that the top equation is written. So I have x equals negative 2 times y. We found y to be negative 2 minus 8, or x is equal to 4 minus 8, and 4 minus 8 tells me x is equal to negative 4. Be careful when you write the ordered pair. Remember, it's always alphabetical order. So I'm going to write my ordered pair as negative 4, negative 2. And that is how you solve systems by substitution.